been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. Fellowship, let's go. My testimony is real. good is going to happen to you today. I said something good is going to happen to you today. Say that to yourself. Something good is going to happen to me today. Sometimes we have to say that to ourselves. Say it again. Something good is going to happen to me today. Now you can listen to this message by calling 770. You can listen to it by phone by calling 770-338-3117. 770-338-3117. Maybe you know a neighbor or a friend or a colleague uh, that you want to pass this message on to. They don't have a computer. All they have is a phone. They can still listen by phone by sending this number to them, 770-338-3117. Now I want to use as a scripture today from which to teach and preach Acts the third, third chapter 12 through 19. Acts the third chapter 12 through 19. Let's listen for the word of God. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though 
by our own power or piety we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Now, I want to use as a title from which to teach and preach today. This is how I know God is on our side. This is how I know God is on our side. I read a story recently, recently about this couple who was getting married. They were standing before the minister and the minister asked them to come closer to him and face him. And then the minister proceeded to conduct the marriage ceremony. He said to the man, do you take this woman to be your wife? And the man responded, I do. And then the minister turned to the woman and he said to her, do you, have, do you, do you take this man to be your husband? And she responded, I do. And then she reached uh, inside of her bra and pulled out a note card and handed it to her husband to be and said to him, now here is a list of things you need to change if you want me to keep on loving you. <laughs> what is the difference between conditional and unconditional love? Conditional love is earned based on certain conditions. Conditional love means if people do a specific thing, uh, the person will love them. If they don't do these things, then the person will not love them. On the other hand, unconditional love is given freely and entirely without expecting anything in return. Too many of us, my brothers and sisters, our love is conditional. It is not constant. We, we base it on if you do this for me, I'll do this for you. Conditional love people turn it on and off. As I studied our text today, the text does not remind me of conditional love. But the text reminds me of the unconditional love of Almighty God. The unfailing love of God. God doesn't always like everything we do. He doesn't always approve of everything we do, but he always, my brothers and sisters, always loves us. As I examined Acts 3, 12 through 19, I began to see that this text not only points out God's unconditional love, his unfailing love, but also it highlights how the Lord demonstrates this unfailing love to us. So that, this is what I want us to explore today. According to Acts 3, 12 through 19, how does God demonstrate his unfailing love towards us? How does God um, demonstrate his dependable love for us? Well, God demonstrates his unfailing love towards us in that he keeps on using us to do good work. He keeps on using us to help somebody. He keeps on using us to inspire and lift up somebody else. Somebody wrote a poem I read the other day that went like this. Just a line to say I'm living. 
that I'm not among the dead, though I'm getting more forgetful and mixed up in the head. I've gotten used to my arthritis, to my dentures, I'm resigned. I can't imagine, I can't manage my bifocals, but oh God, I miss my mind. For sometimes I can't remember when I stand at the foot of the stairs, if I must go up for something, or if I just came down from something. And therefore, and before the fridge, so often my poor mind is filled with doubt. Have I just put food away? Or have I come to take some out? My brothers and sisters, we have blemishes and flaws. We are frail and feeble and flimsy. And we are not all we should be. But God keeps on using us to do his will and to work his good pleasure. And any good we do, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, being eyes to the blind, is because God has enabled us to live out his good purpose. Just before we get to our main text today, which starts at Acts, the third chapter, the twelfth verse, in Acts, the third chapter, one through ten, Peter and John meet a man who has been lame from birth. When Peter and John encountered this man in the temple, he thought they would give him a donation. Instead, Peter said, silver and gold I have none but what I have that I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth get up and walk Peter helped him up and the man began walking and shouting and praising God and saying hallelujah and all the people saw it and filled with wonder they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened what they seen happen to this man and then Peter says to these amazed people, you Israelites, why are you surprised at this? Why are you staring at us as if we made him walk by our own power and piety? Listen, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus. In other words, Peter said to them, we didn't heal this lame man, Jesus did. Peter said, the Lord used us. Listen, Peter said, we have let the Lord down many times, but he just keeps on using us. We have fallen short many times, but the Lord just keeps on equipping us to help somebody. Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are what, has, we are what he has made, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Oh, my sisters and brothers, God put every one of us on this world or in this world to make a difference. God created none of us just to sit around and take up space. I know I'm right about it. God did not create none of us just to eat all we can eat and drink all we can consume. The Lord created us to allow him to use us to give something back. He created us to make this world a better place. Oh, anytime I see a person helping somebody else, I say to myself, that is God demonstrating his love for us. Anytime I see somebody donating clothes or shoes, I say that's God demonstrating his love to us. Anytime I see somebody giving food to the hungry, I say to myself, that's God demonstrating his love to us. God demonstrates his unfailing love towards us, my brothers and sisters, in that he keeps on using us and equipping us and empowering us and preparing us and outfitting us to do good. Oh, I know I'm right about it. So what must we do? Every day we get up. We need to say, Lord, use me to be your eyes, your hands, and your feet. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is doubt, let me sow faith. Where there is darkness, let me sow light. 
And then when you are in a position to help somebody, don't grumble about it. Don't complain about it. Don't blow a gasket about it. Be happy about it. Why? Because God is using you to answer that person's prayer. Hallelujah, somebody. Be happy. Be excited. Be lit up like a Christmas tree. You are chosen, a chosen instrument for God for that situation. Hallelujah, somebody. When I look at this text that Luke wrote for us, I think about all the people who failed Jesus during his time on earth. I can't help but think about that because in verses 13, 13 through 14, Luke reminds us about all the people who failed Jesus. The chief priests and the scribes sought how they might put him to death. Judas betrayed the Lord and Jesus was uh, arrested. Peter, you remember, denied that he knew the Lord. The Roman soldiers mocked and beat Jesus. The council of the elders of the people found Jesus guilty. Pilate and Herod put Jesus on trial for a crime he did not commit. The crowd, you remember, chose to release Barabbas, a murderer, from being crucified rather than Jesus. But not one time did I hear Jesus say, I'm giving up on y'all. You all are just, you just won't do right. You are not worth me dying for. I didn't hear Jesus say that. Even when people messed up, Jesus kept right on loving them. Even when people turned their backs on him, Jesus kept right on loving them. Oh, God demonstrates his unfailing love towards us, not only by continuing to use us to do good works, but also by continuing to love us even though we keep on failing him. Hallelujah. Although we fail God every day, he keeps on loving us anyway. In his book, The Pleasures of God, John Piper shares why God's love is superior to any love we will find here on earth. Sometimes we joke and say about a marriage the honeymoon is over, he says. But that's because we are finite. We can't sustain a honeymoon level of intensity and affection. We can't foresee the uh, irritations that comes from long-term familiarity. We, we can't uh, stay as fit and handsome as we were then. We can't come up with enough new things to keep the relationship that fresh. But God says his joy over his people is like a bridegroom and a bride. He is talking about honeymoon intensity and honeymoon pleasures and honeymoon energy and excitement and enthusiasm and joyfulness. The Lord is trying to get into our hearts what he means when he says he rejoices over us with all his heart. And added to this, that with God, the honeymoon, listen, never ends. Lord have mercy. He is uh, infinite in power and wisdom and creativity and love. And so he has no trouble sustaining a honeymoon level of intensity. He can foresee all of the future quirks of our personalities and has decided he will keep what's good for us and change what is it? Oh my God. He will always be as handsome as he ever was and will see to it that we get more, listen, and more beautiful forevermore. He is infinitely creative to think of new things to do together so that there will be no boredom for the next trillion years of an age of the millennium. Lord have mercy. Christian evangelist Paul Washer said, I have given God countless reasons not to love me, and none of them changed his mind. God's love for us never decreases, my brothers and sisters. God's love for us is like the ocean. You can see where it starts, but you can't see where it ends. In Acts 3.13, Luke says to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified this, his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided 
to release him. When Luke uses the phrase, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God of our ancestors, he could have said to the people, the God you serve. Or he could just simply say, the God you know. But, but, but Luke doesn't do that. Listen, why doesn't he do that? The phrase, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob serves as a reminder of the long relationship that Israel has enjoyed with Yahweh. God stuck with them through thick and thin, through times when they were faithful and times, Lord have mercy, when they were not. God provided for them even in the times they didn't want to be with God. God provided for them even when they doubted and stopped trusting God. God demonstrates his unfailing love towards us by time and again, loving us even when we turn our backs on him. I know I'm right about it. God keeps on blessing us despite our mistakes, my brothers and sisters. God keeps on showing us favor despite our faults and our falls. The psalmist says it like this, Lord, your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. And I never, ever have to be afraid. God demonstrates his unfailing love towards us. Not only by time and time again loving us even when we turn our backs on him, but also by constantly seeking to teach us. God's quest is always to instruct us. Luke says in Acts 13, uh, the third chapter, the 13th verse, Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, whom he had determined to the release. To understand the healing of the lame man, these people must first understand Jesus, who Jesus was, understand Jesus, who made recovery possible who made the healing possible for the man so God used that moment as a teaching moment to tell them about Jesus God shows us his enduring love towards us by always seeking to teach us God's mission is always to educate us to train us to equip us uh, to guide us to direct us how does he teach us sometimes he uses the Bible Sometimes he'll use our situations in life. Sometimes he'll use people. Sometimes he'll use the storms in our lives. Do you see, did you, do you see how many um, mass shootings we have had on, in um, 2021? In February in Oklahoma, six people were killed. In March, in Colorado, I believe 10 people were killed, and in California, four were killed. And this past week in Indianapolis, eight people were killed. And this is not the whole list of places where we have seen mass shootings. God didn't cause the killings, but I'm sure, my brothers and sisters, God is saying to us, get the lesson or keep on repeating it. I'm sure God is saying sometimes in life your situation will keep repeating itself until you learn the lesson. Sometimes God will teach us through the foolish things we do to ourselves. I know I'm right about it. God's mission, my brothers and sisters, is always to educate us, to train us, to guide us, to direct us. So what should we do? Get the lesson. One um, a Buddhist uh, teacher said it right, nothing ever goes away until it teaches us what we need to know. And then we must remember that God uses every challenge to develop us into the people he wants us to be. So we have to say to God, I'm open, God. Use the challenges in my life to squeeze out the real me, to change my life for the better, to bring me closer to you, to rescue broken people like me. If we let God, my brothers and sisters, he won't let us waste the adversities in our lives. He will use them, hallelujah, to teach us. In Acts 3, 17 through 18, Luke says, Now, sisters and brothers, I know you acted in ignorance when you crucified Jesus. 
not fully aware of what you were doing, just as your rulers did also. And so God has fulfilled what he foretold by the mouths of the prophets, that his Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, would suffer. To those who persecuted and mocked Jesus, to those who took sticks and struck him on his head, driving the thorns they placed on his head for a crown deeper into his scalp. To those who threw Jesus backwards on the cross, drove heavy square nails through Jesus' wrist and deep into the wood, then extended both his feet so his toes pointed downward. To those who drove a nail through each of his arch, arches, Luke said to those who did this to our Savior, they didn't know what they were doing. They meant it for evil, but God allowed it to happen for good. Jesus died for us. And guess what, my brothers and sisters, and it's difficult for me to even say this, but it's true. Those same people who caused chilling death to creep through Jesus' tissues in his body. Jesus was dying for them also. And they didn't even know it. They didn't even know that our Lord was dying for them too. They didn't even know that he was being stretched out for them too. I said, said he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was punished. He was blistered so we could be healed, so that our lives could be better. As we journey this world that sometimes break our hearts and seeks to keep us from pushing ourselves upward so that we can breathe so we don't die on our own crosses. We have to remember that what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn for our good. What the enemy means for bad, God will transform it into tremendous blessings. What the enemy means to use to mess up our lives, God will transform it into a miracle. What the enemy means to hurt us, God will use to prosper us. What the enemy means to use to bring hardship, God will use and turn it into something for our advantage. And you know what? God will even take our messes and use them to help us. He will take our own mistakes and to serve a good purpose for us. God will take our own wrongdoings to show us that his plans are bigger than our flaws and our blunders and our transgressions. Oh, my brothers and sisters, God demonstrates his unfailing love towards us in that even when we don't know what we are doing, God is still seeking to work things for our good. God, when he wrote down the plans for each of our lives, those plans weren't dependent on us being perfect. Our mistakes are no surprise to him. Thank you, Lord. We make mistakes, but you forgive us. We make wrong choices, but you still love us. We lose our way from time to time, but you always show up in our lives to lead us back to the right place. Thank you, Lord, for taking our trials and turning them into testimonies. Thank you, Lord, for taking our struggles and turning them into strengths. Thank you, Lord, for having a purpose for our pain and a reason for our struggles. Thank you, Lord for being our strength and our shield and a very present help in a time of need. Thank you, Lord, for building us up when it looks like you are breaking us down. Thank you for using our wrong decisions to bring us to the right places in life. Thank you, Lord, 
for watching over our goings and our comings both now and forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for using our mistakes for good. Thank you. Thank you for making the wrong, taking the wrong things that we've done in our lives and using them for our good. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us yesterday and today and tomorrow. Thank you for taking care of us even when we didn't know you were taking care of us. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us out of light into the dark place. Thank you, Lord for walking with us and talking with us even when we didn't know that you were doing it. This is how I know God is on our side. This is how I know that Jesus is walking with us and talking with us. This is how I know he is on our side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.